Hi guys, I'm Sebastian and today I want to talk to you about this new repo that Andre Karpati just made public. So Andre was actually my first online educator and the person who got me into loving LLMs and everything that happened beneath them. So this new project called NanoChat yeah, is his masterclass in simplicity. So basically shows us how can we how we can train our own mini chat GPTs uh, in about four hours for a hundred dollars in one clean, understandable code base. So the real magic isn't that just to, that it works, is the design choice choices hidden inside. So I want to show you what makes it brilliant. So this this isn't a massive framework, right? It's only about 8,000 lines of code across 40 something files. So uh, nothing confusing, no giant abstractions. You can actually read it line by line and know what's happening. Even if we look at the dependencies themselves, we have around 11 Python packages, which are simple and intentional. And my favorite part is that he even writes the math in comments. So you understand why I don't know, uh, for example, the model downloads around 24 data sh shards. And this is happening because of the chinchilla scaling. Don't worry about this, but it's basically a simple rule of thumb saying a model's data set should be about 20 times larger than its number of parameters. So he literally shows you uh, the calculation right in the script. Okay, um, let's start with the first one. So the tokenizer he used. Most projects rely on big external libraries like Hugging Face tokenizers that are so powerful but heavy. Andre instead built his own tiny tokenizer in Rust, about 400 lines of code. It's called Rust BPE. Uh, BPE stands for byte pair encoding and it's a simple, simple way of splitting text into reusable chunks that models understand. So it trains its vocabulary, exports to tick token and stops there. Nothing extra, no overhead, just one, uh, one line compiles it and Python can use it immediately. So that's engineering restraint from my perspective. As of the GPT architecture, um, yeah, the model itself includes all the modern GPT upgrades as of the rotary embeddings, this smart way of encoding word order, uh, QK norm, which helps stabilize the attention, ReLU squared activation, which is for faster learning and no unnecessary bias terms. So everything important fits into this one Python file. Even the normalization step we can see here, he uses RMS norm and it's a tiny mathematical trick to keep values balanced without any extra trainable parameters. So yeah, uh, another uh, choice that I like he made is this moon optimizer. So what he does here uh, is <laughs> here is where it gets creative. So he introduces this optimizer. Uh, most people know, I don't know, Adam or SGD, but Moon has a clever step. So after each update, it rebalances the weight matrices. So they stay neatly aligned. What's That's called uh, orthogonalization. And he also uses a method named uh, Newton Schultz. Don't, don't worry much about it, but uh, it just means repeat a quick correction several times until the weights behave nicely. So this is very compact, stable and runs efficiently on GPU pre precision like pfloat 16. So embeddings use Adam W while linear layers use Moon. So we have these two optimizers, each for the job they are best at. Um, the other choice that I enjoyed he made is in here. So, uh, yeah, for the, when the model is generating text, it needs to remember what's already been said, right? So that memory is called a key value cache. Andre wrote this custom engine that automatically expands 
uh, that cash is needed. So nothing crashes or restarts mid-generation. And here is this fun touch he had done is this um, calculator tool helper. He actually built a calculator tool and when the model writes uh, something like, I don't know, Python start. Uh, yeah. So it knows to evaluate a math expression, calculate the result and then insert the answer directly into the reply. So the model can do basic reasoning, no external API, no plugins, just self-contained tool use. Um, also, I like that uh, the transparent training loop. Uh, base train, okay. So um, the training loop is refreshingly clear. So no high level libraries, no magic frameworks, just plain PyTorch. So every line shows exactly what the GPU is doing. Um, he even measures MFU somewhere in here. Uh, so yeah, uh, also the GPU that's using and for the MFU is uh, short for model flow utilization, basically how much of the GPU's potential you are actually using. So you can see efficiency printed live while training. And that earlier chinchilla rule that I was talking about, it's also built in. If you specify a target number of parameters or flops, the script automatically decided, decides how many training steps to run. As for the, um, okay, chat web, okay. Yeah, as when you finish training, you can immediately, immediately talk to your model. So no extra setup. Andres serves both the user interface and the API from a single fast API server. The root route simply returns the HTML chat UI and another endpoint streams generated text token by token. So you get live responses in the browser. This is a clean, unified, production ready way of doing it. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much what I learned from Andre, the systems thinking. So every choice from the tokenizer, optimizer, cache uh, training loop solves exactly one problem and nothing more. So yeah, simple code that does really work. So that's the craft. So yeah, thank you Andre for this. And um, I will uh, put, place the links below to go build your own chat GPT. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, this is my second day of uh, this challenge. I'm still kind of new to this recording stuff. I'm trying, still trying out. This is my first try and I'm not gonna edit it. I'm just gonna put uh, this out there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the content, please leave a like, subscribe. If not, yeah, just give me some feedback in the comments. Thank you so much.